Despite Bruce Lee's passing several decades ago, the actor and martial artist remains a topic of fascination for many. His untimely death at the age of 32 sparked widespread curiosity about the true circumstances surrounding his demise. Recently, Chuck Norris, a fellow martial artist and colleague of Lee's, made a surprising revelation that has added a new layer to the mystery. Stay tuned to find out what Norris had to say about Lee's final moments. Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris, both legendary martial artists, developed a close friendship and mutual respect starting from their first meeting at the All-American Karate Open Championship in 1967. This encounter marked the beginning of a bond that went beyond their shared interests in martial arts and fighting techniques. At the championship, Norris was impressed by Lee's speed and technique, and the two quickly became friends. Over time, they trained together, exchanged ideas about martial arts, and developed a deep respect for each other's abilities. Despite their competitive natures, the two never let their egos get in the way of their friendship. They supported each other's careers, and when Lee was looking for someone to play his nemesis in his classic film Way of the Dragon, he turned to Norris. Their on-screen rivalry was intense, but off-screen, they remained close friends. Norris has spoken fondly of Lee, describing him as a very kind, generous, and warm human being who was extremely dedicated to his craft. Lee's untimely death in 1973 was a devastating loss for Norris, who has said that he still misses his friend to this day. However, their friendship and mutual respect continue to inspire martial artists and fans around the world. The legacy of Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris is a testament to the power of friendship, mutual respect, and a shared passion for martial arts. Their bond serves as a reminder that even in the most intense competitions, there is always room for camaraderie and appreciation for each other's skills and achievements. Bruce Lee, the renowned actor and martial artist, found a valuable training partner in Chuck Norris. Their backyard workouts were more than just casual sparring sessions, they were opportunities for both men to exchange techniques and strategies, improving their skills in the process. Norris, known for his expertise in high kicks, introduced these techniques to Lee, who had previously avoided them. This introduction led to a significant enhancement in Lee's martial arts abilities, allowing him to further refine his unique style. Their rigorous training regimen included practicing various moves and counter moves, constantly pushing each other to improve. Through this collaboration, both martial artists gained a deeper understanding of different fighting styles and techniques. These training sessions also allowed Lee to experiment with new approaches and incorporate elements from various disciplines into his own style, Jeet Kune Do. By integrating high kicks into his repertoire, he added another dimension to his already formidable skill set. Thus, the time spent training together proved invaluable for both Lee and Norris, leading to personal growth and development in their respective martial arts journeys. The lessons learned during these sessions would later become integral parts of their legacies in the world of martial arts and cinema. And so, through dedicated practice and mutual respect, two masters honed their craft, leaving behind a lasting impact on future generations. In the early 1970s, a close friendship and collaboration between two talented individuals culminated in the creation of a groundbreaking film, Way of the Dragon, directed by none other than the legendary actor, philosopher, and martial artist, Bruce Lee. This movie featured a now iconic fight scene that has left an indelible mark on the annals of cinematic history. This unforgettable sequence was shot in the grandeur of the Colosseum in Rome, pitting Bruce Lee against his fellow martial artist and actor, Chuck Norris. Both men displayed their incredible prowess, executing lightning-fast moves while demonstrating remarkable control over their bodies. Their skills were on full display, captivating audiences worldwide, and elevating the status of martial arts films forevermore. At the heart of it all was the visionary mind of Bruce Lee, who meticulously choreographed every move to perfection. His dedication to his craft shone through in each frame, resonating deeply with fans even today. Meanwhile, Chuck Norris proved himself more than capable of holding his own against the charismatic Bruce Lee, delivering a performance worthy of praise. What makes this particular fight scene stand out is how it transcends language barriers, devoid of dialogue yet rich in emotion and tension. Each punch, kick, and block tells a story, weaving together a spectacle that continues to fascinate viewers across generations. Even those unfamiliar with martial arts cannot deny the raw power and artistry exhibited by these two formidable opponents. To this day, the impact of Way of the Dragon reverberates throughout the entertainment industry. Its influence can be seen in modern action movies, 
which often draw inspiration from its innovative fight scenes and high-energy combat style. Moreover, the legacy of Bruce Lee lives on, inspiring countless aspiring martial artists and actors around the globe. So, when considering some of the most memorable moments captured on celluloid, look no further than this classic encounter between two legends. Decades have passed since its release, but the friendship and collaborative spirit behind Way of the Dragon continue to echo loudly, solidifying its place among the greatness of cinema history. And so, we remember this timeless masterpiece fondly, appreciating the immense talent and passion poured into creating something truly extraordinary. Bruce Lee, the renowned actor and martial artist, was famous for many things. His lightning fast punches, his unrivaled speed, and his intense dedication to perfecting his craft. But one often overlooked aspect of Lee's legacy is his openness to learning from others, even if it meant going against his own preconceived ideas and beliefs. For instance, when it came to high kicks, Lee had always been hesitant to incorporate them into his fighting style. He believed that they lacked power and effectiveness compared to other moves like punching and grappling. However, everything changed when he met Chuck Norris, another accomplished martial artist who specialized in high kicks. Despite their initial differences, Lee recognized the value in Norris' technique and became eager to learn from him. With diligent practice and guidance from Norris, Lee quickly mastered the art of high kicking. In fact, just six short months later, Lee's high kicks were said to be as impressive and effective as Norris. This willingness to learn and adapt set Lee apart from many of his contemporaries. Rather than stubbornly clinging to outdated ideas, he remained humble and teachable throughout his career. And by doing so, he continued to grow and evolve as both a fighter and an artist, leaving behind a lasting impact on the world of martial arts and cinema alike. Bruce Lee's innovative martial arts philosophy, Jeet Kune Do, has had a profound impact on many, including actor Chuck Norris. This approach emphasizes simplicity, directness, and freedom, encouraging practitioners to adapt and use whatever techniques work best in any situation. At the heart of Jeet Kune Do is the idea of adaptability. Rather than adhering to a rigid set of movements, this philosophy encourages practitioners to be flexible and responsive, using their instincts and the specific circumstances of a situation to guide their actions. This approach is encapsulated in the phrase using no way is way, which emphasizes the importance of remaining open to different possibilities and avoiding dogmatic thinking. Simplicity and directness are also key principles of Jeet Kune Do. Practitioners are encouraged to focus on what is essential and to avoid unnecessary movements or flourishes. This approach is based on the idea that simplicity and directness are often the most effective strategies in a confrontation. Another important aspect of Jeet Kune Do is the idea of freedom. Practitioners are encouraged to explore different techniques and approaches and to find what works best for them as individuals. This philosophy rejects the idea of a one-size-fits-all approach to martial arts, instead emphasizing the importance of individual expression and creativity. Overall, Jeet Kune Do is a dynamic and innovative approach to martial arts that has had a lasting impact on the world of martial arts and beyond. Its emphasis on adaptability, simplicity, directness, and freedom has inspired countless practitioners and continues to do so today. Bruce Lee, the actor known for his roles in martial arts films, was also a skilled practitioner and teacher of Jeet Kune Do. This unique martial art philosophy emphasizes the interception concept, which involves blocking an opponent's attack before it reaches you. This requires quick thinking, fast reactions, and good timing. Interception in Jeet Kune Do goes beyond simply reacting to an opponent's moves. It involves understanding the opponent's movements and anticipating their attacks. By intercepting the attack at its source, the defender can neutralize the threat and gain the upper hand. This proactive approach is a key aspect of Jeet Kune Do and sets it apart from other martial arts. To effectively implement the interception concept, practitioners must focus on developing their reflexes and anticipation skills. This can be achieved through dedicated training and practice, as well as through the study of an opponent's movements and tendencies. By understanding an opponent's patterns and habits, a Jeet Kune Do practitioner can better predict and intercept their attacks. In addition to its practical applications, the interception concept also has philosophical implications. It reflects a mindset of proactivity and anticipation rather than simply reacting to events as they occur. This proactive approach can be applied to all aspects of life, from personal relationships to career goals. 
Bruce Lee's emphasis on the interception concept helped to establish Jeet Kune Do as a unique and effective martial art philosophy. By focusing on anticipation and proactivity rather than simply reaction, practitioners can gain a strategic advantage in any confrontation. Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do was not just a martial art, but a way of life that emphasized open-mindedness, flexibility, creativity, self-discovery, and self-improvement. The actor believed in learning from personal experiences and adapting techniques to one's own style. Jeet Kune Do, which means the way of the intercepting fist, was developed by Lee in the 1960s. It was his interpretation of martial arts, combining elements from different styles such as Wing Chun, boxing, fencing, and wrestling. But more than just a fighting style, Jeet Kune Do was a philosophy that encouraged personal growth and self-expression. Lee believed in learning from one's experiences and adapting techniques to fit one's own style. He rejected the idea of fixed forms and techniques, instead emphasizing the importance of fluidity and adaptability. This approach allowed practitioners to be more responsive to their opponents and to develop their own unique style. Open-mindedness was also a key principle of Jeet Kune Do. Lee encouraged his students to be receptive to new ideas and to be willing to experiment and explore. He believed that by keeping an open mind, one could continue to learn and grow throughout their life. Flexibility was another important aspect of Jeet Kune Do. Lee believed that being able to adapt to changing circumstances was essential in both martial arts and in life. By being flexible and adaptable, one could respond effectively to challenges and overcome obstacles. Creativity was also highly valued in Jeet Kune Do. Lee believed that creativity was essential for self-expression and personal growth. He encouraged his students to think creatively and to find new and innovative ways to express themselves. Self-discovery and self-improvement were at the heart of Jeet Kune Do. Lee believed that through martial arts, one could learn about themselves and develop their physical, mental, and emotional abilities. He saw martial arts as a means of self-improvement rather than just a way to fight. In conclusion, Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do was more than just a martial art. It was a way of life that emphasized open-mindedness, flexibility, creativity, self-discovery, and self-improvement. By learning from personal experiences and adapting techniques to one's own style, practitioners could continue to grow and develop throughout their life. Renowned for his impressive physical prowess and acting skills, the actor Bruce Lee had a history of back issues due to an injury he sustained in 1968. This injury led to his hospitalization, but even after receiving medical attention, Lee did not take it easy when it came to training. His dedication to maintaining peak physical fitness was unparalleled, yet his refusal to rest and allow his body to heal resulted in severe health problems down the line. Despite warnings from his doctors regarding the risks associated with pushing himself too hard, Lee continued to train vigorously. He believed that through discipline and willpower alone, he could overcome any obstacle thrown at him. However, fate had other plans for this accomplished martial artist and actor. On the fateful night of July 20, 1973, while working on post-production tasks for his latest film project, the actor complained of a severe headache. Unbeknownst to him, taking medication for his pain would trigger a fatal reaction with his previous medications. As a result, he suffered from cerebral edema, swelling of the brain caused by excess fluid buildup. The rapid onset of symptoms left little time for intervention, and despite efforts to save him, Bruce Lee tragically passed away at the young age of 32. To this day, fans around the world continue to cherish his contributions to both cinema and martial arts, leaving behind a legacy that resonates deeply within the annals of history. As we reflect upon the life of this iconic figure, one cannot help but marvel at how his impact transcended beyond the boundaries of language, culture, and genre. Even now, stepping into a dojo or watching one of his films allows us to feel connected to the indomitable spirit of this legendary man. And though his time with us was cut short, the mark he left on the world remains etched in our collective consciousness, inspiring generations past and present alike. Bruce Lee, known for his exceptional physical fitness and martial arts skills, tragically passed away due to cerebral edema, a serious medical condition where excessive fluids collect in the brain, causing increased pressure inside the skull. This buildup of fluid results in damaged brain cells, reduced blood flow, and insufficient oxygen supply to the brain, which can turn fatal if left untreated. During the shooting of Game of Death, the actor experienced seizures followed by a coma, caused by a reaction to a painkiller medication called equagesic, prescribed to treat a headache. 
An autopsy revealed that he died due to cerebral edema resulting from this adverse drug reaction. His unfortunate passing at the age of 32 shocked both the film industry and fans worldwide. The rapid accumulation of fluid in Bruce Lee's brain led to swelling, damaging vital areas responsible for essential functions like breathing and heart rate regulation. Consequently, these complications resulted in his untimely death before receiving proper treatment for the underlying issue, cerebral edema. Had it been identified earlier, modern medicine might have saved the iconic figure who transcended martial arts into cinema. This sudden loss serves as a grim reminder of how crucial early detection and intervention are when dealing with cerebral edema symptoms, regardless of one's health status or lifestyle habits. Even someone as physically fit as Bruce Lee could fall victim to this dangerous condition. Renowned for his incredible physical prowess and discipline, the actor Bruce Lee followed a strict regimen both in terms of diet and training. To fuel his intense workout routines, he consumed a high-protein diet, rich in foods like lean meats, eggs, and vegetables. Additionally, he turned to natural supplements such as ginseng and royal jelly to enhance his energy levels and overall performance. Drinking large quantities of water was equally essential for him as it helped flush out toxins from his system. Despite medical advice urging him to rest and recuperate, Bruce Lee's unyielding determination and pursuit of perfection often led him to push himself too hard during workouts. This relentless drive sometimes proved harmful to his health, contributing to various health concerns throughout his career. Nevertheless, he remained steadfast in his approach, exemplifying his now legendary dedication to martial arts and fitness. His infamous stubbornness extended beyond merely challenging his own limits. He famously refused to alter his intensive training methods despite warnings from experts. As a result, the pressures of maintaining his physically demanding lifestyle ultimately exacerbated his existing conditions, eventually culminating in his untimely death at age 32. Nonetheless, Bruce Lee's influence continues to resonate profoundly within the realms of cinema, martial arts, and popular culture worldwide. Chuck Norris has always held a deep respect for the late Bruce Lee. In numerous interviews and publications, Norris has referred to Lee as a legend and a genius who changed martial arts and cinema forever. Norris has often spoken about how this classic actor inspired him and countless others with his groundbreaking films and martial arts techniques. Their friendship went beyond mutual admiration as Norris maintained a close relationship with Lee's family, particularly his son, Brandon. In fact, Brandon and Norris worked together on the film The Walker, where they shared a strong bond both on and off the set. Bruce Lee's influence extended beyond his untimely death in 1973 as he left an indelible mark on the world of martial arts and cinema. His innovative approach to martial arts, which combined traditional techniques with modern philosophy, revolutionized the way people thought about combat and self-defense. Moreover, Lee's on-screen presence was electrifying and his charisma and physical prowess captivated audiences worldwide. He starred in several iconic films, such as Enter the Dragon, which showcased his unique style and cemented his place in film history. Norris has often spoken about how Bruce Lee's legacy continues to inspire new generations of martial artists and filmmakers. Indeed, this classic actor's impact on the world of martial arts and cinema is undeniable, and his genius continues to resonate with fans and practitioners alike. Norris's tribute to Bruce Lee is a testament to the enduring influence of this legendary actor and martial artist. His respect and admiration for Lee shine through in every interview and publication, and his close relationship with Lee's family demonstrate the profound impact that this classic actor had on those around him. As we reflect on Bruce Lee's life and career, it is clear that his legacy will continue to inspire and captivate audiences for generations to come. His contributions to martial arts and cinema are immeasurable, and his impact on the world is still felt today. Bruce Lee's son, Brandon Lee, followed in his father's footsteps by pursuing a career in martial arts and acting. Sadly, Brandon's life was cut short in a tragic accident on the set of the movie The Crow in 1993. His death was a devastating loss, not only for his family and friends but also for the film industry. Chuck Norris, a fellow actor and martial artist, described Brandon's death as losing a second son. Norris had worked with Bruce Lee in the past and had a close relationship with the family. He attended Brandon's funeral to pay his respects, highlighting the impact that Brandon had on those around him. Brandon's death was a shock to everyone who knew him and to his fans around the world. His potential as an actor 
and martial artist was cut short, leaving many to wonder what could have been. Despite the tragedy, Brandon's legacy lives on through his work and the memories of those who knew him. The set of The Crow was a somber place following Brandon's death, but the cast and crew came together to finish the film in his memory. The movie went on to become a cult classic, and Brandon's performance was widely praised. Brandon's death was a tragic accident, but it did not define his life or his career. He was a talented actor and martial artist who left a lasting impact on those around him. His legacy continues to inspire and influence those in the film industry and beyond. According to biographer Matthew Polly, it is possible that the cause of actor Bruce Lee's sudden death was actually heat stroke and not an allergic reaction as previously believed. This theory gains credibility when considering certain factors from Lee's past and the circumstances surrounding his passing. For instance, Lee had experienced a severe case of heat stroke years before his death, which left him hospitalized for several days. Furthermore, during his time in Hollywood, he made the decision to undergo a risky procedure called liposuction to remove his sweat glands, a choice that could have contributed to his vulnerability towards overheating. On the fateful day of May 10, 1973, Temperatures were soaring high in Hong Kong where Lee resided. He spent much of the afternoon inside a hot and humid editing room working diligently on his latest movie project. When evening fell, Lee retired to rest but soon began suffering seizures caused by hyperthermia. Despite medical efforts, his core temperature continued to rise uncontrollably, ultimately leading to his untimely demise. Polly argues that these series of events point strongly toward heat stroke being the true culprit behind Lee's tragic departure from life far too early. However, official records still list death by misadventure as the reason for the actor's passing. Bruce Lee was known for his incredible physical fitness and martial arts skills. However, many people may not know that he had a history of heat-related illnesses. According to Polly, a researcher who has studied Lee's death, one factor that may have contributed to his fatal heat stroke was his practice of removing his sweat glands. The idea behind this was to reduce sweating during strenuous workouts and make it easier to see defined muscles. But by doing so, Lee may have unintentionally increased his risk of overheating. Sweat glands play a crucial role in helping the body regulate its temperature by releasing perspiration, which then evaporates and cools the skin. Without enough sweat glands, Lee would have had a harder time cooling down when engaged in physically demanding activities. On top of this, Lee had already experienced heat stroke before. In fact, just two months prior to his tragic death, he suffered from another episode while training in his home gym. This incident left him weakened and unable to continue practicing for several days. Despite this warning sign, Lee continued pushing himself hard during subsequent workout sessions. His fate took a turn for the worse on July 20, 1973. That day, after taking painkillers for a recent injury, Lee wrapped himself up in a heavy cotton jacket and rode a motorcycle to help keep warm. Unbeknownst to him, these factors combined with the sweltering summer heat created the perfect storm for disaster. Once inside a stuffy editing room, where temperatures were reportedly around 85 degrees Fahrenheit, Lee began feeling ill, but ignored the symptoms until it was too late. He collapsed shortly afterward due to severe dehydration brought on by the heat stroke. Despite efforts to revive him, the actor could not be saved. His untimely passing at age 32 shocked both fans and colleagues alike. Today, experts like Polly argue that if Lee had paid more attention to signs of overexertion and taken better precautions against extreme heat, he might still be alive today. The autopsy report of Bruce Lee revealed no signs of an allergic reaction. However, it showed that the actor's brain had swelled by 133%, indicating cerebral edema. This swelling is consistent with heat stroke, which occurs when the body's inability to cool down causes fluid to build up in the brain. Heat stroke is a serious condition that can be fatal if not treated promptly. It is usually caused by prolonged exposure to high temperatures, especially when combined with strenuous physical activity. In the case of Bruce Lee, his intense workout regimen and sauna sessions may have contributed to his tragic death. Cerebral edema is a condition in which there is swelling in the brain. This swelling can be caused by various factors, including head injury, infection, and heat stroke. When the brain swells, it can put pressure on the skull and other structures in the head, leading to serious complications such as seizures, coma, and even death. The autopsy report also showed that Bruce Lee's body temperature was 4150 degrees Celsius at the time of his death. This temperature is extremely high and is consistent with the symptoms of heat stroke. 
In addition, the report noted that there were no other significant findings, such as trauma or disease, that could have contributed to his death. Bruce Lee's tragic death at the age of 32 shocked the world and left his fans mourning. His legacy as a martial artist, actor, and cultural icon continues to inspire and influence people around the world. Despite his untimely death, his contributions to the world of film and martial arts will always be remembered. The autopsy reports findings of cerebral edema and heat stroke provide a sobering reminder of the dangers of overexertion and high temperatures. It is crucial to take precautions when engaging in physical activity, especially during hot weather, to prevent heat-related illnesses. By doing so, we can honor Bruce Lee's memory and ensure that his legacy lives on. The mysterious circumstances surrounding the death of beloved actor Bruce Lee have fueled various theories over the years. One such theory suggests that he may have been assassinated by the Triads, a powerful Chinese criminal organization. This conjecture arises from several factors, including Lee's alleged defiance towards the group and potential financial motivations. Lee had previously crossed paths with the Triads through his involvement in martial arts circles. Some speculate that his outspoken criticism of their activities and refusal to allow them to profit from his fame might have provoked their wrath. Furthermore, certain sources claim that he rejected offers to teach martial arts to Triad members, further antagonizing the group. Financial gain could also have played a role in the Triad's supposed involvement in Lee's demise. At the time of his passing, the actor was reportedly working on a major Hollywood project that threatened to expose corrupt practices within the entertainment industry. Such exposure could potentially harm the Triad's illicit operations, providing yet another reason for them to target Lee. The most prevalent theory regarding the method of Lee's alleged murder involves poisoning. According to some accounts, a slow-acting toxin was administered to him either during a meal or while practicing traditional Eastern medicine. Another possibility put forth is the use of dim meg, a controversial technique often referred to as the touch of death. However, it is essential to note that these claims remain unsubstantiated and no concrete evidence has emerged to support them. Despite persistent rumors linking Bruce Lee's death to the triads, Official investigations concluded that natural causes were responsible. An autopsy revealed a cerebral edema, which led medical experts to diagnose a fatal reaction to a painkiller prescribed for a previous injury. Nevertheless, the enigma surrounding the iconic figure's untimely passing continues to intrigue fans and inspire conspiracy theories worldwide. The mysterious death of the actor, Bruce Lee, has been the subject of much speculation over the years. One theory that has gained traction is the triad theory, which suggests that the triads may have played a role in his untimely passing through the use of a technique known as dim make, also referred to as the death touch. This technique involves striking specific pressure points on the body, resulting in internal injuries or even death. Proponents of the triad theory point to several pieces of evidence to support their claims. For instance, it is said that Bruce Lee had received numerous death threats prior to his passing. Additionally, the circumstances surrounding his death were somewhat suspicious. He died suddenly while working out in the company of two close associates, one of whom was a member of the Hong Kong Triads. Furthermore, when Lee's body was examined after his death, there were reportedly signs of bruising and needle marks found on various parts of his body, despite these intriguing details. However, many experts remain skeptical of the triad theory. They argue that there is little concrete evidence to support the idea that dim make can actually cause fatal harm to its victims. Moreover, some suggest that the supposed signs of trauma on Lee's body could just as easily be attributed to natural causes or other factors unrelated to foul play. Ultimately then, while the triad theory offers a tantalizing explanation for Bruce Lee's tragic demise, it remains firmly in the realm of speculation rather than established fact. The idea of the Lee family curse has been passed down through generations rooted in Chinese folklore. This curse allegedly targets the male members of the Lee family, resulting in tragic and often violent ends. Despite efforts by Bruce Lee's parents to shield him from harm, the specter of the curse continued to loom over him throughout his life. The actor's father, Lee Hoi Chuen, was already aware of the curse before Bruce's birth. In fact, it had claimed several lives in the family tree including those of his own father and brother. Determined to break the cycle, Li Hoi Chuan turned to traditional Chinese practices like Feng Shui and sought protection from spiritual advisors. These protective measures extended to young Bruce, who grew up surrounded by religious artifacts and talismans meant to ward off evil spirits. 
However, despite these precautions, fate seemed intent on pursuing its course. As Bruce's star rose in Hollywood, he faced numerous challenges, both personal and professional. He suffered from debilitating health issues and lost close friends suddenly. Tragically, his career was cut short when he died unexpectedly at the age of just 32. His death sent shockwaves around the globe, leaving fans devastated and questioning what could have caused such a promising talent to be taken so soon. Some pointed to the lingering presence of the alleged curse. Adding fuel to this theory, another male member of the Lee family met an equally untimely demise Bruce's son, Brandon. At 28 years old, Brandon also succumbed to unforeseen circumstances during the filming of a movie. Despite attempts to dispel the notion of the Lee family curse, it continues to hold sway among many people even today. Regardless, the legacy of Bruce Lee remains undeniably powerful, inspiring countless individuals worldwide long after his passing. The idea of the Lee family curse has deep roots in Chinese folklore and superstitions. This belief suggests that misfortune plagues the Lee family due to a powerful sorcerer's curse or past acts of betrayal and revenge. One can trace back this notion to the life of Bruce Lee, an accomplished actor who became a legend in martial arts films. As per some accounts, the origins of the alleged curse can be traced back several generations before Bruce Lee. His grandfather, Lee Hoi Chuen, faced tragedy when his opera troupe visited America in 1901. He left behind his pregnant wife, Grace Ho, who later gave birth to their son alone in San Francisco, an event believed to have been influenced by the family curse. Afterward, Li Hoi Chuan fell ill during a performance tour and died abroad, separated from his family. These unfortunate incidents fed into the narrative surrounding the supposed curse affecting the Lees. Later, Bruce Lee's father remarried multiple times, further fueling speculations of bad luck haunting the family. Eventually, Bruce himself experienced turmoil throughout his career. Despite becoming a groundbreaking figure in Hollywood, he encountered numerous challenges along the way. For instance, during the production of Game of Death, he suffered seizures while dubbing voiceovers and tragically passed away at the age of 32 under mysterious circumstances, which many attributed to the family curse. Despite these tragic events, it cannot be ignored that external factors might also explain the adversities faced by the Lee family. Seeking solace in curses may oversimplify complex issues like cultural differences, language barriers, and industry prejudices that Bruce Lee confronted during his lifetime. Nonetheless, the mythology around the family curse persists even today, remaining deeply entrenched in popular culture narratives related to Bruce Lee and his descendants. According to traditional Chinese beliefs, certain individuals can be susceptible to evil spirits due to various factors, including their birth date or time of birth. To protect Bruce from any potential curses, his parents took several protective measures when raising him. Firstly, they decided to give him a female nickname and dress him in girls' clothing during his early years. This unconventional approach aimed to confuse the malevolent spirits by leading them to believe that Bruce was actually a girl. Additionally, they went so far as to pierce his ears, further emphasizing the idea that he was not who they thought he was. Furthermore, the Lees sought guidance from fortune tellers and astrologers, hoping to gain insights into how best to safeguard their son against harm. These experts would have analyzed Bruce's birth chart and provided specific recommendations based on their interpretations. Despite these efforts, it quickly became apparent that Bruce had an innate talent for martial arts, which ultimately led him down a different path than what his parents initially envisioned. Nonetheless, these unusual yet well-intentioned actions demonstrate just how deeply rooted cultural practices can influence our everyday lives, even affecting something as seemingly trivial as naming conventions and fashion choices. Bruce Lee's parents held strong beliefs in fate or main. According to Chinese philosophy, one's path in life is already set, with both its opportunities and obstacles determined before birth. This belief shaped how they raised their son, accepting the trials he would face while doing all they could to safeguard him. Growing up, young Bruce experienced his share of hardships. His father, a prominent actor in Hong Kong, faced professional setbacks which affected the family financially. Despite these struggles, Bruce's parents remained steadfast, trusting in the course laid out for them. As Bruce pursued his passion for martial arts and acting, conflicts inevitably arose. In traditional Asian culture, actors were often looked down upon, seen as lower-class citizens. Yet, even knowing this, Bruce's parents supported his ambitions wholeheartedly. His mother, Grace Ho, played a pivotal role during Bruce's time in America, where racial prejudice was rampant. 
She stood by her son, encouraging him through discrimination and adversity. Both she and Bruce's father believed in nurturing their child's talents rather than shielding him from difficulties. Thus, embedded deep within Bruce Lee's psyche was this acceptance of challenge as part of his journey. Rather than fearing opposition, he embraced it, turning each hurdle into a stepping stone towards greatness. Indeed, many credit this mindset as instrumental in shaping his unparalleled success in Hollywood. This story serves as a reminder that our lives are indeed influenced by forces beyond our control. But it also emphasizes the importance of resilience and determination when navigating life's twists and turns. By adopting such an attitude, we too can transform seemingly insurmountable odds into catalysts for growth and achievement.